Welcome back, everybody. My name is All Fun and Games. I stream every day on Twitch TV, and I also make fun little videos here on YouTube. Today, I'm going to be showcasing the best food to actually get when it comes to healing, as I think it's going to change your world. If it's something that you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, you're going to be in for a treat, literally, because it's, the, in my opinion, the best food that you can eat that's going to get you a lot of healing. And it's very easy to actually make. Okay, I say very easy, but I say easy enough. All right, if you watched my previous video on meatballs or any other videos that I've showcased before, here we go. What I'm talking about today is none other than pierogies. The thing about pierogies is it's missing one key ingredient that we currently don't have in our, in our actual little tiny fridge. We have lots of monster meat, and guess what? I finally actually made a bird cage, and I also now made a bird trap that now has a bird inside of it. So if you missed how to do that, well, guess what? I'm going to showcase uh, how to make a birdcage in another video and how to catch a bird in another one too. So just follow along with my videos. But let's keep it short and sweet, shall we? Yes, I'm in creative mode so I can do this quite quickly for you or quick enough. Essentially, what you need to do is make sure that you get yourself none other than a crock pot after crafting an alchemy machine. And then from there, you can get yourself a birdcage. Birdcage requires a papyrus and... Uh, six gold and two seeds. Seeds are extremely easy to get as you just wander around and basically birds deliver them to you at your feet. Papyrus is easy to get by basically going and finding none other than what you need to get from uh, uh, from cut reeds. Now cut reeds are easily obtainable by just going over to the swamp. You walk in the swamp and there's literally reeds everywhere. Once you get eight of them, you come back here and there you go. That's how you get your two papyrus that you need for the birdcage. And the rest is just history as, oh, you're getting attacked by a thing, as you just need to get gold. And gold is very simple to get. If you've gotten gold for your alchemy machine, you know where to get gold from too. Gold can be obtained by basically going over to your little tiny rock veins that have little gold inserts inside of them. And boom, bam, there you go. That's how you're going to get your gold. You can also get it by trading in trinkets and so on and so, so on. I've showed multiple ways of actually getting gold in multiple, uh, multiple other videos. Okay, now we go ahead and we craft our bird cage. It's empty. How do we get a bird? Well, then we get ourselves our little bird trap. Our bird trap is obtained by using three twigs and four silk. How do we get ourselves silk? Well, we go and kill spiders, which we've been doing periodically. That's how we got ourselves our little tiny little monster meat. If you are lost and you want to watch a step-by-step -step guide on doing this, I have a one year in Don't Starve Together where I literally walk you through step-by-step uh, -step in Don't Starve Together and showcase how to get all this stuff. So don't worry about that. And of course, I'm making the videos on individual things like birdcage and how to make yourself a bird trap, etc., etc. So don't worry about that too much. Okay, now we're here. Let's get cooking. When you put that bird trap down, you have to place a seed on top of it. So let me showcase how it looks. Bird trap goes down. You grab yourself a seed and literally you click on it and it says bait. You walk away, don't stand too close, and a bird will eventually drop down. It'll happen pretty quick as birds, you know, are not that intelligent and don't serve together. All you got to do is when you finally catch the said bird, you pick it up. The trap will reset itself and now the crow is in your inventory or whatever bird you end up having. It doesn't really matter what bird you have, although it depends on what kind of bird you like. There we go. Now the crow is inside of here. As long as we remember to feed it within 20 days, it's not going to die and not turn to goop. Okay, now we want to get ourselves some eggs. Eggs are the best ingredient and probably one of the most important ingredients in Don't Starve Together as it opens up a, like a gigantic amount of recipes in DST as you need eggs to pretty much do lots of different things. But let's just focus on pierogies, okay? So how do you get eggs? Um, hi, little bird. Would you like to eat one of my monster meats? There you are. It's uncooked. Hope you enjoy. Wait a minute. You didn't die from it? Uh, that's weird. Yes, as you know, when you actually take yourself and eat a little bit of matcha meat, well, it fills you up a little bit, mm -mm -mm, but it also takes 20 of your HPs. For some odd reason, birds are not affected by this. Magic? I don't know, probably. I don't know what birds are doing and why they're not taking any damage because every other item, or sorry, every other mob in Don't Starve Together takes damage from matcha meat except for, you know, monsters. So are birds monsters? Uh, I guess so. Anyways, moving on. So now we have an egg. Okay. What do we do with that egg? Well, now we put it inside of the recipe. All right, so let's start with that. One egg, one veggie of any kind, doesn't matter what it is as long as it's a veggie. But stone fruits are also considered veggies technically, and stone fruits are one of the best items in, in DST to actually use as filler. So if you end up finding stone fruits from the, from the lunar island, get them and keep them forever. Just keep replanting them, picking them, all that stuff, because they are one of the best things that you can actually get in DST, which I've showcased stone fruits before and how to get them and all that other stuff. So if you get a chance, please watch that video. They also count as filler too. So one egg, one veggie, 
one meat of any kind, doesn't matter what it is, could be a little tiny little uh, piddly meat and a thing of filler, which I usually like to use ice because ice is very easy to get. And there you go. Now, when you cook up said pierogi, well, guess what? It's going to come out and it's going to look very delicious. In the previous video, I mentioned a meatball and how good meatballs are, but let's talk about why pierogies are so amazing. The recipe is actually extremely easy to get. You might be sitting there like, it's not that easy. Well, meat's very easy to get. Filler is extremely easy to get, as there's a ton of it. And veggies are fairly easy to get too, if you know what you're looking for, or if you're just going around and growing stuff in your in your area. Now, berries can also be used, obviously, or sorry, uh, st uh, stone fruits can be used as d not only filler, but they also can be used as the actual veggies too. So the more of that you get, the better it is. So let's just say that I have an abundance of stone fruit. All I need to do is make sure that I have a little bit more eggs and I can be making a ton. This is why stone fruits are one of your best things for pierogi recipes and just making a crazy amount of them. The bonus about um, actual said pierogi is that when you make pierogi, you're going to end up with none other than a lot of days before this thing starts to go stale. Specifically, almost 10 days, which is crazy. 10 days. The average food that comes out of your uh, into your inventory only lasts like a few days, if that. So you just got to respect the fact that this pierogi is going to not be stale for 10 days. You can walk around it. Okay, moving on to the food value. Not the best, 37.5 hunger and plus 5 sanity, but 40 HP. The one bonus about this, none other than just how much it heals you, is by how fast your character consumes the pierogi. So if you are actually wandering around and you have a stack of them in your inventory, well, not, you are now going to be just walking around and being able to heal extremely fast. And that is why pierogies are so easy and probably one of the best healing and don't starve together. If you agree or disagree with that, feel free to comment down below, but I truly think I'm right in assuming that pierogies are probably up there, if not in the number one spot. Yes, there's multiple other ways to heal in DST, and of course this is not the only route. There's multiple ways like butter muffins and all that stuff, but those all require other things to do, and I mean, in my opinion, I think pierogies last a very long time, and they're very awesome when it comes to actually healing you and being able to sustain your hunger at the same time. So you kind of get a two for one, but mainly just focus on the fact that they actually last a lot of time outside of your outside of your fridge but also within your fridge that's doubled up so you know what it makes sense that pierogi are, are actually really good food to actually get and make because they're going to heal you quite often for quite a lot even when they are stale and that is it. Make yourself some awesome pierogi. I just wanted to showcase how to make it and why it's so awesome. And what makes it so awesome is a fact, like I said, is that you can eat it so quickly. So just remember that when you're eating, when you're cooking food in DST, consumption time is actually something to look forward to. That's why dragon pies actually are probably one of the best things or used to be anyways, before they kind of got nerfed into the ground when it came to actually the farming update. I used to love dragon pies, but now pierogi are my new favorite thing. So tell me down below what you prefer, but I think pierogi are top notch and same with meatballs, which I've mentioned in a previous video for hunger. So let's keep moving on to the next thing down the list. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.